Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to install Kali Linux alongside your Windows 10 or Windows 11. So this is a dual boot method, this time we are not installing on the virtual box or VMware. So we are installing another operating system on this same computer and we'll be able to choose which one to boot when we are starting our PC. Now the only requirement is that you have a pen drive ready which we are going to use for this installation. So first head to your browser. And then let's download Kali Linux. So just search for Kali Linux. And then you can see the first page over here Kali Linux pen testing and ethical hacking. Click on it. Okay, so here we go. Now click on this download button on the screen. And it will take you to this page. Now what we need is the installer image for Kali Linux. So click on installer image over here. And it will take you down here. Now you can see Kali Linux for 64-bit system and for 32-bit as well. Now we are going to download for 64-bit since your PC should be 64-bit. But if you don't know if your PC is 32-bit or 64-bit, simply head to your search bar and then search for about PC. Now you can see about your PC, click on it. And you can see under system type, this is 64-bit operating system x 64 bit processor. So just confirm that. And then click on the installer to download the complete offline installation of Kali Linux which we are going to use. So it is now downloading. I already have this downloaded so I'm going to cancel it but make sure you download. Now the next thing we need is a software we can use to create a bootable pen drive. So we want to be able to boot Kali Linux from our pen drive. The name of the software is win 32 Dix Imager so search for it on your Chrome browser. And here we go, you can see the link to SourceForge. Now I'll also provide this link in the video description. So you can just click on the link and it should take you to SourceForge where you can just download the software. So this is Win32 Dix Imager. Now click on download button over here. And it should start downloading. The file is about 11 megabytes, so it's really easy to download. So after downloading Kali Linux image file, and also downloading Win32 Dix Imager, we can then close our browser and then open our download folder. Now you can see in our download folder, we have Kali Linux 2022.4, which we downloaded the installer. And then this is Win32 Dix Imager. I actually downloaded it twice, so let me just delete one of it. Now let's open Win32 Dix Imager over here. Now let's install, so I'll set the terms and then next, next, install, successfully installed, so let's untick this and then click on finish so we can launch this program. Okay, so here we go. Now you should connect your pen drive or your flash drive as you may call it to your PC. Now in my case, this is my pen drive which is about 16 gigabytes, and you can see it over here. So this is the pen drive we are going to use to install Kali Linux. So now you can see in my Win32 Dix Imager, it is asking for an image file. Now this is where we will specify the Kali Linux image file we downloaded. So click on this browse icon over here. And then you can navigate to the folder where Kali Linux is. Now in some case, you may not see Kali Linux over here just like I can't see it right now. But this is the folder where it is. Now what you do is, you can see by the side over here, click on this image and then select the next option to show everything there. Now you can see this is our Kali Linux 2022.4. Now click on open. Now we have to select the destination. You can see drive A and drive F. So make sure you confirm, open your file manager, drive A is our pen drive with 14.6 gigabytes. So make sure you confirm that and then select drive A which is your pen drive you want to run this. Now all you have to do is click on write. And then click on yes it is going to erase this pen drive and then move everything there and we are going to boot from the pen drive so click on yes and it should start now this may take long depending on the read and write speed but in my case you can see the estimated time which is about nine minutes this is actually fair so we just have to wait so you can see it is now completed now let's click on ok we can exit 
now you can open your file explorer and you can see the drive has been renamed to usb drive f and you can see the size now don't bother about any of this and lastly we have to set up a partition where we are going to run the installation so head to your search bar and then search for disk partition now click on create and format hard disk partition so this is just disk management you can see over here now you just have to locate the drive where you want to install kali linux so you can see i currently have two drives one is an ssd with 223 gig the other is a hdd with 232 gig and you can see over here so i want to install kali linux on the ssd drive so i want to allocate about 50 gig to kali linux since i have about 100 gig free now anything less than 50 gig you may encounter issues since the installation will take up some space and you need enough space to be able to run everything smoothly so right click on the drive you want to shrink and then allocate to kali linux and then click on shrink volume now we have to select how much space we want to allocate so we are giving this drive 50 gigabytes and that is where we are going to install kali linux now anything less than 50 gigabytes you may have issues so all you do is click on shrink and you can see a new partition over here on allocated now you don't have to allocate this so all you have to do is restart your pc and then it should boot into kali linux installation instead of windows 11 or 10 whatever you're using currently so just hold f12 or f2 and it should boot into the setup mode then here you select your usb storage device so it can boot from the storage device now hit enter to select the graphical installed now select a language for the installation and then continue also select your country and region and then continue as well and then select your keyboard layout and continue now don't worry about this just hit continue and then select do not configure the network at this time and then continue now leave the hostname field just as it is you don't need to modify anything just continue and then for the full name enter your full name for the administrator of this computer so i'm using everything tech okay continue now also enter a username which you're going to use to access your machine so make sure you put something you remember and then continue set up a strong password which you're going to use to access your machine and then continue now select your time zone and continue now this is probably the most important part because we have to partition these disks so select manual over there so we can partition it manually and then continue now we have to use the free disks we are located which is about 50 gig so just scroll down and you will locate your disks you partitioned earlier you can see 52.4 gig and it is free so that's the disks we are using so select the disk and then continue now we are going to use automatically partition the free space so we don't need to do this manually so click continue now we are going to select all files in one partition which is recommended and that's actually what we need continue now click on finish partitioning and write changes to the disk you can see it has created three different partitions the swap disk the bios disk and the main disk where we are going to install so click on finish partitioning and then continue enable yes write changes to the disk continue Now this is where you select the desktop environment you are okay with. So you can see GNOME, KDE and XFace. Now XFace is the default desktop environment and that's actually what I want to continue using. But if you want to use something else, you can just stick GNOME or KDE Plasma and then continue. Now select yes to install Grub Bootloader and then hit continue. Now select the second drive, you can see dev sdb which is the drive we are installing Grub Bootloader. The last partition is just our pen drive so ignore that. 
So select the second drive and then continue. We are done. So lastly, hit continue to restart into Kali Linux. Now remember to hold Ctrl F12 or F2, F7 depends on your PC so it can boot into the setup mode. Now select your drive. In my case, you can see it is the second drive over there. Now this is where Kali Linux is installed. So you will see an option over there. Now log in with your username and password and we are good to go. So you can see Kali Linux has been successfully installed. So basically this is how to install Kali Linux dual boot on your computer. If this was helpful, kindly hit the subscribe button and turn on your post notification. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one. So you can also boot into Windows whenever you want. Now to boot into your computer, once you restart, you could still hold F12 and then select Windows Boot Manager or whatever drive there. And then you should be able to boot into Windows and access your machine.